All right, random thoughts by Luda. Let's settle this shit once and for all. All my people that believe that the earth is flat, I'm tired of y'all. I can't stand y'all. You know damn well that the earth is spherical, just like my afro. That really is one spherical afro. And because of that, if we wanted to, we could measure and use spherical trigonometry to determine exactly how much curvature exists every inch of your head. Likewise, since the Earth is claimed to be a sphere 24,900 miles in equatorial circumference, it is a simple matter of curvature calculation to determine how much a spherical Earth of given proportion must curve downward each mile. Long-distance photography and infrared video showing objects hundreds of miles away where they should be obscured by many miles of curving Earth are instead plainly visible afront a flat horizon that rises to the eye level of the observer. This is just one of hundreds of proofs that Earth is most certainly not a sphere. Another proof that the Earth is not spherical like your afro is fluid physics. All standing bodies of water are level meaning they do not deviate in elevation across their surface at any point. This is why it is known as sea level, not sea curve. Why water is physically used in spirit levels to determine true level, and why water has been the universal leveling tool among builders for all of known history. We can physically test and demonstrate for ourselves the intrinsic properties of water and know them empirically through hands-on experimentation. As for the supposed curved bodies of water upon the globe, or the augmented virtual reality water balls on NASA's International Fake Station, these you and I cannot physically test or demonstrate ourselves, nor know them empirically through hands-on experimentation, because the globe claims require a reference frame that only a few hundred people in history, nearly all of whom are or were Freemasons, have ever been privy to, so-called outer space. You, Ludacris, myself, and everyone listening to this has never been to an altitude where we can see any curvature whatsoever, let alone see whether or not Earth is a gigantic water ball with bendy oceans and upside-down people in Australia. Likewise, we have never been aboard the International Fake Station, so all supposed science experiments done from this reference frame, only attainable by government actor-knots, are outside of what we can actually, empirically, know for ourselves. Ludacris makes the typical Glober comment that all of you who believe the Earth is flat, you know damn well it's spherical. The undeniable truth, however, is the exact opposite. To all of you who believe the Earth is spherical, you know damn well it's flat. You believe the Earth is spherical because you have been shown images like these. and images like these, and images like these, which are admittedly composites or computer-generated images and not photographs. You believe that standing bodies of water can stick to and curve around objects also because of things you have been told by authority figures or shown on television, and not from your own experience. From your own experience, you know that every body of standing water is and must be level. From your own experience, you know that the Earth is a level, motionless plane, and the only curvature you ever experience comes in the form of hills, mountains, and valleys. Everyone who is intellectually honest accepts this zetetic, empirical reality and realizes that belief is required for the tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball Earth, but not for the level, motionless plain Earth each and every one of us experiences our entire lives. But let's just say, for instance, I was to entertain the bullshit. So let me get this straight. Y'all saying when you see a ship sail off into the distance and then you see it slowly disappear, that the ship just falls off somewhere? No flat earthers whatsoever claim that ships disappearing in the distance is due to them, quote, falling off somewhere. So that is your own fallacious little red herring. Five minutes of research and you could find the actual following answer. The fact of the matter is that the law of perspective on plane surfaces dictates and necessitates this occurrence. For example, a girl wearing a dress walking away towards the horizon will appear to sink into the earth the farther away she walks. 
her feet will disappear from view first, and the distance between the ground and the bottom of her dress will gradually diminish until after about half a mile it seems like her dress is touching the ground as she walks on invisible legs. The same happens with cars speeding away. The axles gradually get lower, and the wheels vanish until it appears as if the car is gliding along its body. Such is the case on plane surfaces. The lowest parts of objects receding from a given point of observation necessarily disappear before the highest. Now, with modern telescopes and cameras, we can prove this as well by successfully zooming in on ships that have gone beyond the horizon and bringing them completely back into full view, hull and all. And since the beginning of the time, once certain people and objects get to the edge, they all just fall off. If that's the case, then where the hell do they go, huh? They go into space? Yet again, Ludacris makes the same red herring, claiming there is some kind of edge of our realm that one could fall off from. Again, no genuine flat earthers have ever claimed there to be an edge. This is just more nonsense from Globers stuck in their outer space cosmology, who imagine that the term flat earth must mean some circular disk floating in space. To begin with, flat earthers don't claim to know how the earth terminates, because we haven't been there, and thanks to the Antarctic Treaty, signed by the most powerful 50 plus countries in the world, we are not allowed to independently explore the southernmost parts of earth, or visit for anything but glorified penguin tours. If you want to discuss things falling off a ridiculous model of earth, however, Let's talk about yours, which claims a force called gravity is so strong that it can supposedly bend entire oceans and keep buildings, people, and everything else stuck to the underside of a spinning ball, while also being simultaneously weak enough to allow birds, bugs, and helium balloons to completely escape its grasp. Why does your critical thinking only apply to the model you were taught and accepted in elementary school? Why are you not applying the same level of scrutiny for both? And speaking of space, all the flat earthers, do you believe that the moon and all the other planets in the solar system are flat too? Or you think we're the only ones in the universe? And here we have the appeal to the sky fallacy. Imagine inviting a contractor over to your house to measure the dimensions of your floor, and he immediately gets out his tape measure and starts measuring all the recessed lights in the ceiling. This is exactly what Globers are doing when they appeal to the shape of various objects over their heads in the sky, while trying to determine the shape of the ground under their feet. The truth is, the only place we see spheres in the sky is NASA's CGI photos and videos. When amateur astronomers photograph and record the stars and planets, here is what we see. Is this a sphere? Are these spheres? Are these spheres? And even if they were spheres, what on earth does that have to do with the shape of the earth? Because obviously the earth casts a shadow on the moon, and when we look up at the moon in its different phases, you do understand that the moon is round, and if it were flat, we wouldn't be looking at a spherical object in the different phases, just like my afro. And for his last point, Ludacris again repeats the myth told in his elementary school textbook that the moon's phases are caused by the sun. The reality is, however, that the moon's phases are provably a property of the moon itself, and not merely reflected sunlight. The sun's light is golden, warm, drying, preservative, and antiseptic, while the moon's light is silver, cool, damp, putrefying, and septic. Plant and animal substances exposed to sunlight quickly dry, shrink, coagulate, and lose the tendency to decompose and putrefy. Grapes and other fruits become solid, partially candied, and preserved like raisins, dates, and prunes. Animal flesh coagulates, loses its volatile gaseous constituents, becomes firm, dry, and slow to decay. When exposed to moonlight, however, plant and animal substances tend to show symptoms of putrefaction and decay. In direct sunlight, a thermometer will read higher than another thermometer placed in the shade, but in full direct moonlight, a thermometer will read lower than another placed in the shade. If the sun's light is collected in a large lens and thrown to a focus point, it can create significant heat while the moon's light collected similarly creates no heat. 
so sunlight and moonlight clearly have altogether different properties. And furthermore, the moon itself cannot physically be both a spherical body and a reflector of the sun's light. Reflectors must be flat or concave for light rays to have any angle of incidence. If a reflector's surface is convex, then every ray of light points in a direct line with the radius, perpendicular to the surface, resulting in no reflection. You follow me? If I'm getting too deep for y'all, stop me, but let's argue in the comments. Let's put an end to these flat earth motherfuckers, I'm tired! Well, you definitely didn't get too deep for me, because all you presented was red herrings and long debunked arguments out of your elementary school textbook. But I must say, with all the ridiculous and ludicrous claims you made in this video, let me just congratulate you on choosing such an appropriate stage name for yourself. Once you go flat, there's no going back. The plan of attack is stick to the facts. The whole thing will fall when we give up the ball and prove that the earth isn't moving at all.